may very well be one of the last people on planet Earth that you would find talking about the need for more laws. One of the reasons that that's true is that I have found that most of the laws that are out there are at least inadequate to the task for which they've been put in place and often put in place for the exact opposite reason of those that you might expect. A perfect example of such a thing is this idea of net neutrality that you find a bunch of people talking about, whether it's a law, regulation, or whatever it happens to be. I don't believe in it particularly much. I believe that it's generally uh, flawed in many regards. And I believe that it's intentionally skewed towards a certain group of people who not only don't need that law, but in fact that I don't, and I think many others, don't desire to see get the law passed. I wanted to talk today about a slightly different subject. I wanted to talk about the su subject of news neutrality on the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I'm your host. I'm Kurt, and today is Tuesday, the 4th of January of 2022. Uh, welcome on to everyone who's here on Rumble, on the podcast, on YouTube, on BitChute, on, on CloudHub, or anywhere else you happen to be picking up uh, my little podcast. Again, the subject for today is going to be news neutrality. Allow me for a second to go through my notes so that you will have some idea what I'm talking about, because I'm sure, quite frankly, that for many folks, even the term is not one that they've probably heard before, and I'm sort of coining it, so that's not too surprising if you think about it. I'm sure a lot of folks have heard of the concept of net neutrality before where certain generally high-powered people seem to think it's a good idea, most of us have zero interest in the concept. In fact, the more technically adept, often the less we support it. I'm fine with the idea of engineering things like network protocols that generally allow for fairness in distribution. Even in that sense, one must be careful not to build things that can be abused by folks willing to take the time, effort, and resources to learn how to do so. Trying to make it so individual entities are, quote, responsible for, end of quote, things like bandwidth control and management in any way more intricate than fine-tuning is not only scary but likely to cause so the same sort of inequality that doing things like uh, banning 20-ounce sodas in a given city might do. If a small internet service provider has to concern itself with such things, its very survival becomes a questionable one. That is its survival, obviously. <clears throat> I bring this up because I heard... An unwitting podcast producer, no need to disclose who, talking about what amounted to applying the same concepts as net neutrality to news. The first thing I'll say about this is not it's not a new concept. In fact, many in the main, mainstream have been pushing this approach for around a decade now. Want to see the result? Just look at the mainstream media. By mainstream, I mean entities uh, the majority of people pay heed to, right? Then, when you're done casting your eye in that direction, take a gander at even the supposedly rightest media entities. Are you, like me, seeing the leftward shift in those entities? When you see companies you used to generally be able to count on saying things that make it so you're no longer interested in what they're putting out there, you have to ask yourself a simple question. Why? It's the supposed idea of being fair and balanced, you'll recognize that phrase, I'm sure, that causes the begin of that slide, from my perspective. From there, the slope becomes even steeper and more slippery. It took me years to come to understand even folks like Uncle Walter, Uncle Walt, whatever, Cronkite, right, were never unbiased. I grant you it's more obvious in the modern day. That may bother you, but I like seeing where people actually live. Even when they tried to act as though they weren't slanted, 
they uh, what they did and didn't report, as well as the language they used, and so much more, meant you were getting reality through their lens. Is news neutrality a great idea? Not any more than net neutrality was, as far as I'm concerned. And I'll say it again. As far as I'm concerned, it was a bad idea, right? I don't agree with the idea of net neutrality. And I don't agree with the idea of trying to do, quote, news neutrality either. There's this, there's this group of people who are confused. And they don't really know what their confusion is. But let me explain it to you. They think that at some point... The mainstream media, ABC, CBS, etc., I'm not name, intending to name names here, I'm just saying people that used to be counted on as impartial news uh, entities were actually what they were supposed to be. Let me make this perfectly clear to you. That's not true. It's not true. They are not, they never were. They are not now and never were impartial entities trying to bring you unbiased news and information. Just the facts, ma'am. I've seen people recently report that, and I'm sorry to tell you this, but I'm not buying. I'm not buying any more now than I was back then. I don't care if you're new or old. It doesn't make any difference. There is no news neutrality. When you see what you see from me, you need to know something. You ready? It's coming from a light, right-leaning sort of right center perspective. I'm not going to try and tell you. First of all, I'm not a news guy. I'm opinion. Second of all, I'm almost in the realm of self-help with a lot of what I put out there these days. But I'm not in the realm of news. And that's on purpose. I know who I am. Not to say that I won't ever present you anything that's newsworthy or something that might find its way into the news, but to say that you need to know that when I present you things, I am going to present you things from a light, right-leaning perspective. If you want to, if you have problems with the term right, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Use conservative. But the point I'm making here is this. I am not somebody who's going to try and tell you there's no bias on what I'm putting out there. I would be lying to you. And let me just tell you something. That goes for CNN, that goes for CBS, NBC, ABC, uh, you know, MSNBC, Dan Bongino, uh, The Daily Wire, Drew Berquist, um, Dinesh D'Souza. Every one of us is slanted in some direction. Now, you might find ways that this person is not slanted like this as that person is. You sort of need to learn who people are and figure out what it is that they're saying. But if you're listening to Brian Stelter or Dan Bongino, you need to count on slant. I'm not saying that that means that they're going to necessarily lie to you. But I'll tell you this. Bongino says it, and I agree with it. If you see me to say something, verify Trust but verify. Use that old Reagan-esque idea of trust but verify. Don't just assume that what I'm saying is right. Don't just expect that what I'm saying is correct. Don't do it for Bongino. Don't do it for Stelter. Don't do it for any of these people. And I don't care if they're news people or opinion folks or if they're just people that you see talking a, a good game on Twitter. Take the time to learn who those people are and figure out exactly what they're about and figure out, while you're at it, what the slant of those people happens to be. Because they're going to have one. I have one. I'd be lying to you if I told you otherwise. Tim Pool has a slant. No doubt. Okay? I like some people's slant better than others. But sometimes people say things and I have to go, Yeah, you know, it, this person annoys me when they talk like this. But actually what they're saying is true. On this particular thing, what they're saying is true. And that's something that you should be finding yourself doing. You should be looking at people that are opposed in their view to you, and you should be saying every once in a while at least, you know what, that person is an idiot maybe even, but this thing that they said, it's right. And if you're not doing that, that's a problem to me. News neutrality to me is not a thing. Okay, I need to go ahead and wrap up. This is the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I'm your host. I'm Kurt, and today is Tuesday, the 4th of January, 2022. That means tomorrow will be that middle of the weekday, Wednesday, the 5th of January of 2022. Um, well, or 
welcome. <laughs> Thank you for everyone who's been here on Rumble, the podcast, YouTube, BitChute, Cloud Hub, or anywhere else that you happen to be picking me up. Remember, Rumble is currently my preferred platform. You can give me a boxing glove or a Rumble on Rumble if you choose to do so. You can give me a plus on Rumble or a minus. That's plus for a positive feedback, minus for a negative one if you don't care for what I'm doing. Obviously, on any of my of the other platforms where you see me, whether it's Minds.com or parlor or anywhere else you happen to see me, you absolutely can uh, can thumbs up or thumbs down or whatever it is, however it works. For YouTube, it's thumbs up for a like, thumbs down for a dislike. Same thing, I think, for Facebook. If you happen to see me there, though, right now I'm not putting my content there directly, but you can absolutely, you know, yeah, I don't care if you ratio me if you really are telling the truth in how you feel about my content. Also, keep in mind that you can comment on whatever it is that I, I put out there, and I will do my best to uh, look at your comments if there's something that I can uh, see, and particularly if I'm notified of them, I'll do my best to internalize them, and if they seem to me to be something that I need to be paying attention to, I will try to do that. If I can respond and feel it's necessar necessary excuse me, to do so, I will do that as well. I uh, hope you're having a good day today. hope everything is going well for you. hope you're stepping into a new year that's looking ever brighter. We have to constantly work towards that, but I think that that's something that we can hope for. And hopefully, I will see you again on Wednesday's edition of the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. The speaker on this edition of the Daily Summation is Kurt Schubert. This video was recorded on Tuesday, January the 4th of 2022. The Daily Summation is created for Kurt's Religion and Politics. Thanks for watching this edition of the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I hope you found it entertaining or instructional or maybe both. Uh, if you want to see more from me, you can go to blogs.kpshubert.com. That's blogs.kpshubert.com. I am on Twitter, Parlor, and Minds.com. My handle on each of those is at kpshubert. That's at kpshubert. I have a Rumble and a YouTube channel. They are the Kurtz Re Religion and Politics channels on Rumble and YouTube. I have a Facebook page. The Facebook page is Kurtz Religion and Politics as well, I, have, I am on Patreon. If you want to support me, that's one of the better places you can do that. And you will find me at Kurt's Religion and Politics on Patreon. I have a podcast. The podcast is podcasts with, a, with an S dot kpshubert dot com. That's podcasts dot kpshubert dot com. I think you should be able to find me with relative ease on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify as well. The best way I find to do that is to look for Kurt's Religion and Politics. You can try to use the Daily Summation. I find that it doesn't work as well as a general rule, but you can always try that. I'm glad to have you aboard today, and hopefully we will see you again tomorrow.